This episode was filmed before the updated rules of the writers and actors strike. Everybody, this is indeed the E-Man, chilling like a villain, singing like Bob Dylan, keeping on the low with some double stuff. Man, I got to give people some context here, right? Like, I, I know this sounds cliche, man, but dreams do come true. You know what I mean? I, I, I've been, you know, I've been very candid about, like, especially uh, uh, two months ago, I went through some real health issues. And, you know, and even two months before that, you know, which I haven't really shared, um, I was just going through a real stressful time. The things that really picked my spirits up was um, because I I was working two jobs at the time and that could could be really hard at times. And so, like, fortunately, at my second job, they allowed me to listen to music or whatever. Music, I I just um, I I got on Apple Plus and I rented uh, The Wizard, which is like one of my favorite movies. Um, And. It just put a big smile on my face. The film perfectly captures what is what it's like to be from a small town. And sometimes, you know, um, you just want to get away. Not because, you know, your parents are, you know, are bad people or what have you, but sometimes you just want to explore. Oh, in no way, form or fashion am I advocating the idea of running away from home. I'm just saying as a kid, sometimes you wanted to explore. But no, kids, don't ever want to run away from home. It's not a good idea. And... That's what the, uh, you know, the more I watched the movie as an adult, the more I realized how much I could relate to the character of Jimmy Woods. It's like sometimes, you know, being quiet, especially in high school and even in middle school, when you just want to be left alone, sometimes being quiet isn't enough. People always got to say some shit, always got to say something, always got something to say. And, I, and you know, but then some, but then you got to show them who you are, you know what I'm saying? But I'm sorry, I might be digressing, but I have a very special guest on the show today. He is um, a part of one of my favorite movies. I actually got the copy right here, The Wizard. You know, as many times as I rented it from Apple Plus, I was like, wait a minute, let me just look on Amazon. Oh, it's only $10. Cool. I should (laughs) have did that from the very beginning. Uh, I want to welcome this actor. And he's been on many things. Uh, uh, Aside from The Wizard, he was in Jeepers Creepers 2. He was in Newsies. He was in this show I remember growing up on TV called Davis Rules. I just remember the theme song, you know what I mean? And um, he's here today, man. It's, it's, it's such a blessing this, to have Mr. Luke Edwards on the special delivery show. Hello, Luke. How are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing good, man. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Absolutely. So I wanted to talk to you about something. And this, is, this is why I love you know interviewing people who I've watched on screen. Because when I do the research and I'm prepared to talk about one specific thing, I'm like, wait a minute. Oh, my gosh, she was in this. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I've never seen Newsies, but I know <laughs> about the movie and I know about that cast. And so I'm just like, oh, my gosh, she worked with Christian Bale. Oh, my gosh, she worked with Aaron Lore, who, by the way, <laughs> is in one of my favorite movies, the Mighty Ducks trilogy. And That's also right. he was in this um this show called Bustin' Loose, which was like a um. Uh, yeah, like uh, loosely based off the um the TV show. I mean the movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm just like, wow, you know. So, and then like I said in in the very beginning, you um you were on Davis Rules and you work with um, uh uh, uh Jonathan Majors, right? Jonathan uh, Winters. <laughs> Jonathan yes. Winters. Sorry, that's yeah. a different actor. I know what yeah. I'm talking about. Yeah, <laughs> different guy. <laughs> Jonathan Winters, the late Jonathan Winters. So um, I wanted to know um, what was it like working on both of those sets? Yeah, it was amazing. You know, that's kind of a fun one for me because not that many people saw Davis Rules. (laughs) I definitely remember. I'm I'm glad that you've even seen it, you know, to appreciate it. Um, It was, yeah, I mean, that was, so that was, you know, like a classic sitcom, you know, kind of deal. That was Carsey Werner, you know, who did all the, they did Roseanne and all those shows. And Cosby, Uh, yes. And they were a great company to work for they were like really really great people which which was nice that made a a big difference um and that was the you know it's the classic uh sitcom schedule which is a nice schedule you basically you know you you rehearse for four days 
and then you shoot on a Friday. So, you know, most of the week is, it's, you know, pretty, pretty chill kind of job. Nice. You know, and then Friday, Friday is, is the pressure day. Then you got to, you know, it's like going on stage. You got to show up and perform. Right. You know? So, um, so it was a, it was a great job and, you know, a really a great cast. Um, obviously Jonathan Winters, you know, a, a legend, you know, and he was, yeah, yeah he's a legend then, you know, I mean, that guy is, he was incredible. <laughs> he would, uh, so, you know, they would, they would write stuff for him. Right. They would, right. they would write lines. He never said a single line they wrote for him. Wow. He would just every time, you know, in every scene, he would just go, you know, he would just start telling a story basically just who knows what he's talking about and so you know a lot of our job was to kind of keep up with him you know yeah because we never knew what he was going to say um you know and it was always something funny and weird and you know he was kind of like our like our crazy grandpa you know so he was he he really kept you on your toes absolutely yeah 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 it was truly like you know a lesson, you know, sort of a masterclass lesson in improv, you know, cause he would just say, he would say something different. Every take was a different story, you know? Wow. It was, it was, like, it was a lot of fun. That when you say that, it, it reminds me of like a lot of people. Well, not, well I, I listen, I listen to a lot of interviews and a lot of people who work with Robin Williams, they say something similar to that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you know, you had yeah. to be on your toes. You had to be on your A game when you're working with Robin, you know, who yeah. is dearly, dearly missed. Um, yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. similar. Yeah. Kind of, you know, zany guy. And those two were friends. You know, I think oh, John really? saw, you know, what Robin was doing and was like, ah, you know, heir apparent. Here's here's the guy who's going to come in and do, you know, the thing that I do you know, yeah. and probably just as well, if not better, you know, so they, they had a kind of a relationship, you know, you can, you can imagine. Oh yeah, man, dude, gosh, such a, <laughs> um, it's, it's so crazy. No. Um, I wanted to ask, what was it like being on that set and working with that, the, some of the people that I just named? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, it was great. It was a lot of fun. Um, so that one, we, we were on the, um, back lot at Universal, and they had uh, they had just rebuilt the whole thing to be you know the New York turn of the century you know kind of New York. Okay. And um, and so it was you know as you can imagine it was like just a million kids. I mean there's so many kids you know in that cast. So we just kind of like we kind of had the run of the place. You know we would just kind of you know like when there was a lot of unsupervised time so we were just kind of like cruising around that back lot you know doing kind of whatever we wanted nice uh, some of the guys made their own movie you know they made a little funny horror movie uh, on in their downtime you know there's a lot of yeah you know, on, on movie sets is this um, in california or in florida uh this is this is in california on the on okay. the universal lot in yeah there in uh yeah, Universal City. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Very cool. So that was a lot of fun. And, you know, Christian Bale, a really nice guy, super, super nice guy. He was great to work with. And, yeah. you know, all those guys, so, so, you know, so friendly. And I was kind of, I was one of the younger ones, you know, right. so they were all sort of big brothers to me. Nice. You know? so they all and Max up. Costello um, from Doogie Hauser, too, right? That's right. Yeah, That's yeah. Right. Max, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Max is doing, you know, Max is doing great. He's working a lot. He did Sopranos, obviously, and right, done a lot of cool stuff. But I, I will always know him from from Doogie Howser. Like I was obsessed yeah. with that show. It, it's kind of weird. I I love the show, but I'm a hypochondriac. So it's just like it's like I'm like I'm watching. I'm like, hold on, do I have appendicitis? Oh, no, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Um. I mean, um yeah. Maybe maybe not good to watch the medical show. <laughs> not good. Oh God, I can't even watch when House was really big. I couldn't watch House, man, because especially hey. when they do the inner stuff, where you can kind of see inside, it will freak me out. Um. But but I but but I love it's it's so. It's it's so crazy though uh, but there's this movie called inner space with dennis quaid and martin short oh yeah and i, I just that. i really love that movie like the special effects are amazing and they're all so practical good. so good um, for the time amazing yes absolutely it actually won an oscar that year and it beat predator um 
Oh wow, for the effects. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for um, okay. in 1989. So, like in uh, in um, it was Predator. It was only like three um um for special effects. It was only three films nominated. It was Predator, Inner Space, and can't remember the third one. But yeah, it, it beat out Predator. For, and Predator, you know, the first Predator was also classic, great man. Effects, great practical effects. Oh yeah. 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 Did you know John Claude Van Damme was originally the predator and then he had the um, I've read I've read about that. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. he's in the suit there for some of it at least. For some of it, yeah. And then he kind of had um somebody replaced him. I forgot what happened. Um <laughs> whew, wow. Okay, so I wanted to talk. Um, you know, I told you today earlier today. Um, I, I um, I mean, maybe like two hours ago, I had opportunity to talk to the director of the Wizard. His name is Todd yeah. Holland, and that was a lot of fun. Um, I actually had um, it was me and my friend, um, Chris Gervais, who's also an actor. He's a uh, director, and he does a lot of cool things. He um, but it was really cool, like you know, because he. My friend Chris is a really big fan of Spielberg and Amazing Stories, and so like you know. Todd directed a few episodes of Amazing Stories, and uh, they were talking back and forth and geeking out, and I loved it, you know. And then we were talking about the wizard, and he was saying how 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 cool you were. It's just it was just a it was just a positive experience, man, and I loved it, man. Um, Todd, uh, Todd is the nicest guy, man. I just you know he's he's one of the directors that I've worked with who I have continued to stay in touch with through the years, you know, because yeah. he's always made himself available you know and just he's just the nicest greatest guy i love yeah. i love God. <laughs> and he, he seems, brings, yeah, he seems he really nice stories that's a that's pretty cool oh yeah yeah man i mean I, and I, I was telling him like you know i miss like that feeling back in the day like when you would have to go home at a certain time and watch this tv show because it came on at this time you had to be in front of the tv and those are one yeah. of those shows you know, and that's not that doesn't really exist now because of streaming and you know all these channels and everything like that. You know, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. I don't get me wrong, I like it, but it's just like there's just no anticipation anymore. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of a lot a lot of like you know, um, for me was the excitement of you know, you know, oh, I got to get home at at this time because different strokes is coming on because Willis got jumped and I want to see if he's gonna make it <laughs> or you know what I'm saying or. Totally waiting in line for two like i'm not even lying when i watched indiana jones in the temple of doom i was living in new jersey and the line was wrapped around the theater twice and so that just built up the anticipation like, oh my god this is going to be the greatest movie ever and it was (laughs) i mean it had every you know dan Aykroyd is even in that movie for a little bit that's right at the very beginning you know and so like i mean it it was funny it was i could talk about it all day it was just everything (laughs) um but i wanted to talk about your movie the wizard um I always I can't believe I skipped this question. Um, you were born in Nevada, right? Uh, so um, the town I'm I'm from is Nevada City, okay. which is in California. Confusing, I know. Okay, it, was, it actually had the name before you know the states were all kind of named. So it's a, it's an old town in California. Okay, well, I always ask people like you know what was the you know I don't want to get too personal, but I always ask you know. It's for nostalgia reasons, you know, what was your childhood like? But more importantly, what was your favorite cereal growing up? (laughs) Well, so uh, both my parents growing up were hippies. Nice. (laughs) So they were real into health food. So I wasn't really allowed to have cereal. (laughs) Um, The one that my dad made made an exception on was uh, (laughs) Kix. Oh, Kix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So which, you know, it had still had plenty of sugar, but it didn't have as much as the other one. So I was I was allowed to eat that one. <laughs> well, you know, it's kid tested, mother approved. That's what, that's all right. Right. Hey, all right. <laughs> um, no, I, I dig it, man, because like my mom. Well, aside from my mom being really frugal, she was also like, you know, she, you know, didn't want a lot of sugary foods in the house. But I would go over to my cousin's house. <laughs> you have, like I will open up the cupboard. It'll be like oh. and, and, you know, <laughs> Smurfberry Crunch, uh, oh. Tricks, uh, oh. Lucky Charms. It was like, oh. and look, I would like detour. I would go straight to the kitchen. Hey, how you doing? Okay, <laughs> you know what can I eat? That's what, that's the goal. But yeah, oh man, gosh, and he had yeah. all of the cool toys. I mean, <laughs> like when I say he had every GI Joe action figure, he had 
every G.I. Oh. Joe action figure. I didn't even like G.I. Joe. I was a Transformers guy. He had all that <laughs> stuff. It was like being in a in a play. It's like being in being in um being in Toys R Us, which is no longer in existence. Sure, but um I'm sure your, your cousin's like, hey man, uh aren't you over here to see me? <laughs> oh, oh yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, no, we we would uh he had this really cool. I don't know if you remember, he had this Godzilla, but Godzilla had wheels at the bottom of his feet and the tongue oh, would like yeah. stick out. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I do remember I, that I was, one. I was obsessed with that thing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, so um Great one. the wizard. Um, and I'm gonna geek out a little bit, man. I mean, because kids, kids now they don't really get it because you know, there's YouTube and you know, and all these things. And you know, if you want to see any kind of gameplay action, you know, what I'm saying, if anything, you know, uh, you could just type it in on YouTube or whatever. But right. when, the, when I first watched the trailer for this movie, and I said, Oh, that looks kind of cool, Fred Savage. I think you know, he's on you know, from the Wonder Years, okay, cute red headed girl. I don't know who she is, but yeah, okay, cool. But then, <laughs> and then you see the Super Mario Brothers 3 thing. I swear, I'm not even joking. I thought it was like a. I thought it was. I thought they were just jiving. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know. I think it didn't look. It. it I said, is this real? Mm-hmm. And not to jump ahead too much, man. But man, that third act of the movie, man, and, it, and the announcer who had incredible energy, he was like <laughs> Super Mario Brothers three, and then you know, and then like you see the map screen all this stuff i'm just like oh my god i mean like i'm absorbing all of it because you didn't get anything like that was like the first of first you know what i mean um so like were you just as excited as an and 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 not only that throughout the whole movie it came out before christmas i remember seeing it with my stepdad and i was like Oh my gosh, because my 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 game library was like this. And I can <laughs> tell you, it was Mike Tyson's Punch Out, it was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, it was Super Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt, it was Tiger Hilly, and it was um Mega Man 2. So when Great I would game. see those games on the screen, I'm like, wait a minute, I have that game. I have Mega Man 2. Oh my <laughs> gosh, yes, I have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, because that shit was hard. And so hard. <laughs> but I beat it. I beat it <laughs> once. And then, you know, so be able to be able to see the games that I have on screen was was something else. But then also there were a lot of games I rented. I rented I rented Ninja Gaten and threw the controller at the screen. You know what I'm saying? Because it's stupid hard. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like it was so much going on. Um, were you just as excited to play these games and, and you know oh, yeah. and see Super Mario Brothers 3 for the first time? Oh, I was, I was super excited. (laughs) I had, you know, I I had all the, I had all the games too. I mean, I didn't, I I had a pretty small library like you and I would rent, you know, I'd rent games over the weekend. Yeah. It was like, yes, it was, was, you know, it was kind of like, it was kind of nervous because it was like, oh, I have to try and beat it over the weekend. Like that's all the time I get, you know? So (laughs) exactly. So uh, the hard. Oh my gosh. Yeah. But, um, Uh, but I, I, you know, so it was, I was very excited to play those games. A lot of the time I didn't get to play the game (laughs) because they, (laughs) so a lot of the, a lot of the movie, really most of the movie, when, when you see me playing, it's a, it's a videotape of someone else playing. (laughs) And I would have to sit there with the, you know, controller and pretend like I was playing and I wanted to play, but they, you know. Good. In video Armageddon, when you when you're playing Ninja Gaiden to, to get to the finals, yeah, stop. I can still see the game playing. I'm like, oh, okay, he's not really playing it, but it's all good. Oh my god, I, I'm I'm gonna like when I'm, yeah, I'm gonna dead you, giveaway, dead giveaway. And when I, well, I'm gonna skip all around because I'm just I'm just so psyched to have you here. Go back to the movie, the beginning of the movie. One thing that really that, that like I said in the very beginning, I really resonate with it, with your character is like how quiet he was. But I envied your character because he had a lunchbox. And I always wanted a lunchbox, man. I never, my, my sister had lunchboxes. I never had one. I have one now, but you know, yeah. you know, whatever. But like <laughs> when I saw him walking down that road in the very beginning, and then he's like, you know, like I said, he just wants to go to California. And, you know, I just, like I said, coming from a small town, sometimes you just want to get away. And I can relate to that so much. Um, now, uh, the film, the film, the, the film was filmed in Utah, or no? Um, it was. We were mostly in um, Nevada. Okay. 
So a lot, I think all of the stuff that was, was played um, for Utah was actually in Nevada. And then obviously a, a lot of what we shot was also in California. So we were kind of really only in those two states, you know, moving, moving up and down. Okay, cool. Yeah. And, 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 oh my gosh, another thing I related to so much and, um, <laughs> okay. So when, when I moved from New Jersey to North Carolina, one of the big changes for me, because every Sunday in New Jersey, my dad, after church, we would go to a, to the corner store and we'll get a hostess fruit pie, right? Okay. That was our special treat for, you know, sitting through church, right? And like, I, you know, I'm like, oh my gosh, the flavors, apple and cherry and all this other stuff, right? When you moved to North Carolina in the 80s, they didn't have any hostess pies. They didn't have any hostess snacks. They didn't huh. have any 7-Elevens. They didn't no have way. any, uh, I, I grew up on this uh, this brand of cookies called Famous Amos Cookies. They didn't oh, have yeah. Famous Amos. They didn't uh. have, they didn't, um, there's another brand called Entermans. I don't know if you ever heard of them. Um, oh, they're yeah, based in um, totally. uh, Pennsylvania, yeah. I think. And no Entermans, nothing like that. So all of my oh. favorite snacks weren't there. When I saw you guys hop on that hostess truck, I was like, oh my God, hostess, this is so cool. And I was totally invested. Did you actually eat some of the snacks or, or what? Oh yeah. Oh, of course. <laughs> I, did, I, had, I had to have at least one, you know. <laughs> you can't, what was you your favorite? One. <laughs> what was your favorite? Oh, uh, well, the, what's, well, man, I can't remember the name now, but with the. Oh, I could tell you. They're ho ho The cream filling. The, the ho hos or the Twinkies? Chocolate with the cream filling. It, it's either a ho ho or it's a chocolate dow. I think probably a ho ho. They were really popular. They were everywhere. Oh, yeah. Probably yeah. a ho ho. Yeah. And they're really good when they're frozen. Trust me. <laughs> oh, okay. Or you put I've them in the freezer, the, the delicious. Now, <laughs> I asked this question to the director, and I don't even know if I made it clear. Cause I would just jump. I was, I'm not, I was a little nervous and I was like, you know, I was jumbling up and whatever, but I'm going to ask you the same question. Um, and, I, and this is kind of like, a, um, this is giving you props too, man, because I, I feel like, you know, this, you know, you're, you're starting with, you know, and I, I don't, let me just say the cast real quick. You, you were Fred, Fred Savage is in the movie. Jenny Lewis is in the movie. Uh, but you had Christian Slater, Bo Bridges. You had, um, uh, hold on one second. I can't remember the guy's name because he was in this great movie called Batteries Not Included. And his name is Frank McRae. He played Spanky. And, right. um, and you were with all of these people. And at the time when the movie came out, Fred Savage was like on, like, you know, he was a big star, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, but a lot of the movie, you know, relies on, is on your shoulders. We had to believe that this kid uh, and they never specifically say, but of course he went through something, do something really traumatic. And um, we had to believe that, you know what I'm saying? We had to believe. What did you pull from, you know, within yourself to make this character come to life? Well, you know, I think when I was, when I was that age, I wasn't all that uh, <laughs> dissimilar from that character. I was okay. pretty quiet. You know, I, I like to kind of, you know, keep my own company. Like I, I like to kind of hang out on my own a lot. You know, my, I was always kind of, um, I was always kind of like writing stories, you know, and, yeah, uh, you know, I would sort of like, you know, create whole worlds, you know, um, I, you know, as some people do when they're, when they're that age. So it was, it was, you know, that role for me, it's pretty easy. It was like, this is not, you know, this is kind of natural for me to, to be like that. Um, you know, so, uh, so yeah, I, I mean, I really was drawing mostly from, you know, my own kind of, uh, orientation to the world, you know, like I'm, I'm pretty cool being quiet, you know, I'm pretty cool being, you know, on my own. <laughs> There's a moment in the film and, um, this is like in the third act of the film where the guy who plays Lucas, he's like, you know, when you guys come down from the elevator and like, there's that really cool moment when you come out and it's like, you know, everybody's going crazy. And then he just looks at you in a really pissed off way. And you look <laughs> at him, I can't even describe it. You look at him like, 
whatever. I, I don't know. It was just so right on, man. And it's just like, dude, it, it's so you're so you're phenomenal in this film, man. You really you really are, man. I just want to give you your props, man. Because um, that's it's what this a, show's you know, about. It's a cool character because he's not really very concerned with most of the things that, you know, people are, you know, tripping out about. <laughs> You yeah, know, like he he's kind of in his own world, and he's pretty happy in his own world. Yeah, you know, so I could I could you know I could relate to that one real easy. Absolutely, man. And I, and watching it, you know, as a kid when I'm watching it, of course, you know, when when the adults are talking in the movie, it kind of goes over my head. But <laughs> and and a lot of things go over my head as a kid. But when I watch it now as an adult, it's like wow, this movie is really this kid's really been through some things like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? It's like, you know, he, he, he saw his sister drown. Yeah. And, and because of that, and because of Bo Bridges character, um, he, he, he's, he's a wonderful actor, but he, it seems like because he's not ready, because everybody d- is dealing with the grief in, 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 in a different kind of way, you know what yeah. I'm saying? That's and right. because of the lack of communication, you know, it, it has this cascading effect and it hurts everybody. You know what I mean? And you know, and, and it's 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 a it's a really, I, I beg people to really re really rewatch the film, man, because a lot of people you know easily write it off as oh it's just a commercial for Nintendo. Yeah, they <laughs> advertise or whatever, but I mean it's a really really good movie, man. It's really great, and I was really surprised to hear when um Todd was saying originally, the ending was going to be totally different, yeah. like like something along the lines of you taking the lunch box and tossing it or whatever and i'm so right. happy he didn't do that because right. like that would have been an oh that would have been hurtful man i mean yeah and, and 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 then the part oh gosh the part in the third act where um after the turn after the tournament is over you go to the to the dinosaur park uh, the, i'm sorry you go to the dinosaur park dinosaur <laughs> park as i stumble and I'm like, oh gosh, I remember this place, Pee Wee's Big Adventure, one of my favorite movies. Isn't that movie? Oh right. gosh, it's so. That's right. I actually, actually had the honor of um talking to um um the actor who played Francis. His name is Mark Holton. Oh yeah, and nice. I had him on. Awesome. And man, we need. To, I was. Uh, I look back at the interview, man. There's so much more I wanted to ask him because he's also in Teen Wolf. With Michael J. Oh, Fox. Yeah, that's and right. I am obsessed. I, as a kid, I was so obsessed with that movie. I would just look in the mirror and pretend I was like turning into a werewolf. Like it was, I was obsessed <laughs> with it. And I love Teen Wolf too as well. It's like I'm, I'm yeah. obsessed with both movies. Um, oh, I love those movies. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I forgot what I was going to ask. Oh, sorry. When you go to the dinosaur park, um, yeah. that scene is really powerful for a few reasons. Because I think this is the first time you and Bo Bridges are actually actually have a scene together in the movie, right? right. Well, what was that like? It was great. I mean, you know, he's a, he's a really powerful performer, you know. So it's always a lot of fun to work with, you know, those certain performers who are you know very generous. You know, he he really listens and he really gives a lot, you know. And so always for us as actors, that's the that's what we're looking for, you know, someone that we can create with who's, you know, who really, you know, makes the work better. You know, he makes all everybody around him better. And that's Bo, you know, he's a, he's a great actor. He's, and, you know, a wonderful guy too. So it was, Christian yeah, it was Slater nice. too. And Christian Slater. <laughs> he's so Which, cool. You know, uh, at that time, he was kind of like a heartthrob, right. you know, it's, it's sort of funny that he shows up in our movie you know, because it's a it's a supporting role, you know, and he's like kind of a big star in that time, in that moment. But it, you know what it was is he loved Nintendo. <laughs> OK, he just loved Nintendo. So when he when he you know, that was this is what I was told that when he heard that they were making a Nintendo movie, he got excited and, and kind of was like, hey, can I is there a role in there for me? You know, and so, of course. Well, yeah, <laughs> nice. And, and he, and, you know, just all the, all everybody in this cast was so nice. Christian is the greatest guy. Like he's so, he's so kind. He's so nice. You know, it's like, we really, we were lucky, you know, with all the people. Oh yeah, man. Um, And even with like, uh, with Jenny Lewis now, um, she's like this, 
like uh this indie rock star you know what i mean she was open i i think i, re- I saw on her instagram she opened up for harry styles and yeah. i think that's pretty impressive because she's around the same age as myself and she's still you know making things happen i think that's really cool what was i gotta give her props too man because like for that role to for her to do that role correctly she had to be like insecure but she also had to be confident you know she kind of had to kind of go against she had to be like like fred savage is you know fred savage is really charismatic you know and, and you know sometimes he could be a little bit of a smart ass and she he, he you know she kind of battled him in that way you know what i'm saying yeah. And, and I she thought that was really him. cool. She had to, you know, she had to go toe to toe with him and hold her own, you know, which yeah. she did, you know, beautifully. Absolutely. What was it like working with her and and Fred too? I forgot to mention Fred. You know, cause I grew up on the Wonder Years, so yeah, yeah, yeah. It was great. I mean, Je- you know, Jenny and I, um, you know, we kind of had a we we have we formed, you know, what for me was like some kind of little partnership. Um, you know, so her and I kind of were like looking out for each other, you know, like we had a, we had each other's backs. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, so, yeah, so she was great. It's so cool. You know, I mean, I think we all, you know, we all really thought she was great. Um, <laughs> and I have, you know, I mean, I haven't really Fred, you know, Fred, I've seen a couple of times because we've done a couple of events, you know, here okay. and there um so i you know i've seen him a little bit um and ben his brother i see on on an even more regular basis ben is actually uh you know he's got political aspirations these days he's i think he's running for congress or anyway oh wow (laughs) but um i I think i heard about that yeah yeah he's he's a you know political uh mover and shaker now i guess (laughs) Um, and Ben's a great guy, but, uh, but Jenny, I haven't seen really since, you know, she's kind of, she, she sort of left the the film world behind, you know, and is really, mm. you know, fully invested in the music thing. And she for obviously, sure. you know, she's a rock star now. So <laughs> for sure, for sure. And I don't even remember if I, I got, I get, sometimes I get caught up in conversation a lot and I can't remember if I asked you this question because I ask all actors this, and this is very important. Um, what was the movie that you watched as a kid that really rocked your socks off? That 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 you were like, oh my gosh, I have to be an actor because even it could be even a TV show. But what what was what was it? Um, the one the one that comes up for me right now is uh, uh, Willow. <laughs> Willow, okay, I watched yeah. like I don't know thirty times, <laughs> nice. however many times I don't know. Uh, and I just, you know, I, I'm, I'm a, you know, I'm kind of a nerd for uh, fantasy sword and sorcery kind of stuff. I love that stuff. So that movie was really, really important to me when I was a kid. <laughs> nice. Um, nice. Did you get a chance to see the Disney plus series that came out and they, I haven't watched it yet. No, I don't, I don't have that Disney service, so I haven't watched it. I okay. really want to, I, you know, I mean, it's, it's an important story for me. So. Yeah, you got to check it out. I, I I hope it's still on there because they it's, they only did it for one season. Um, I didn't get a chance to see it. Um, but yeah, oh my gosh, you know, um, I I, de- I totally remember that movie because um, uh, Warwick Davis is is the yeah. lead character, yeah. and you know, I knew I knew he, I knew he played an Ewok, and I was a Return of the Jedi dude. Love yeah. all Star Wars, but. Return of the Jedi was the first film for me that I actually watched in the movie theater, the first Star Wars film. Yeah. So I had a different connection with it than the other films. As a matter of fact, I didn't even know that there were two previous films before that one. I just knew I just knew from the word of mouth, like, okay, this is really cool. And then the, then the merchandise and like, you know, the yeah. Burger King glasses and drinking my chocolate milk out of the Burger King, you know, all of that stuff kind of, you know, added to the experience of the movie. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Oh. Um, but yeah, that's how I recognize work from. He was in the Leprechaun movies too, I believe. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, he's you know he's kind of a star. <laughs> Warwick is. I think uh, when we were talking about your character of um, Jimmy, do you think it's more um, he suffers from P- PTSD or is it he's actually autistic? <laughs> that's a you know what uh, I I think I've actually asked that question of the screenwriter <laughs> like. You know what was what was your uh, design there, um, and it, I think it, 
it was actually left, you know, it was, uh, it was, it was intentionally left, you know, unaddressed basically. So it was, mm. it was sort of for people to kind of determine um, for themselves. I think it was, you know, I think it's mostly PTS. I think, you know, he had gone through some, you know, obviously very tough and it had kind of forced him to retreat. Um, but I, for me also in the, in the, in the way that I approached the character, I always felt like he was a certain type of person. You know, I think that there's like certain type of people react to, you know, trauma in different ways. And so for me, it was always like, well, he, you know, he has to be a certain type of person in order to have that reaction to trauma, you know, to pull back. So, you know, severely, you know, where yeah. he speaks, um, you know, that, that is a certain type of person may you know maybe it is you know autistic on the spectrum or something like that i don't know maybe he's just naturally you know is more quiet or or reticent you know right so for me it was kind of a combination of both okay know, in terms of playing it absolutely man um there's uh this, one of my favorite uh so many great parts in this movie the third act when um you guys are playing mario 3 and then um Jenny's Jenny's character is like or her, Jenny's character her name is Haley and she's yeah. like get the star get the star <laughs> and there's something that you do it's just so cool like you look focused but then when you the, the, the part of Mario 2 or Mars no sorry Mario 2 but the part of Mario 3 where you're running and you have to jump up to hit the block and get the star you right. do this thing like this I just thought that was so cool I, I just <laughs> thought that was really cool because that's how we Especially back in the day, that's how we will play. We really get into the game. We kind of move oh, yeah. our bodies with the characters. And I just thought that was so cool. And it, it's especially cool like when you win and everybody's cheering and losing their minds and you just turn around and you smile because you. I feel like your character's happy, they're happy. And he, you know yeah. what I'm saying, the, the, the family's happy. And I, I thought yeah. that was just really beautiful, man. It's a really great film, man. I mean, like, I, I love films like this that people kind of overlook sometimes. Um, I was just talk. I had the pleasure of talking to um, actor Quentin Aaron. Uh, he was in The Blind Side. But oh, yeah. He was also in this movie called Be Kind Rewind with Jack Black and Most Deaf. Yeah. And Super I didn't cool. know he was in it until I did the research. And I was like, right. that's like one of my favorite movies, too. Wow. Another movie I think people just totally missed. Like, right. if they really watch it's the it's a beautiful film, man. I mean, like, yeah. Yeah. It, it brings me back. It, it it makes me think about especially living now how physical media is starting to become extinct you know right people don't people's everybody's streaming things and the problem with that is is like when there's something adventurous about going out to your mom and pop video store or a blockbuster going there yeah trying to pick out the movie making a decision on the cover art you know what i'm saying yeah. Yeah. And then going all the way back home and watching it and being satisfied. There's something <laughs> really rewarding about that. Yeah. And I, I feel like, you know, um, that movie reminds me of that. And also reminds me of like, you know, it's so cool to like, because in the in the movie, you know, they, you, you've seen the movie, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I love that um, movie. It, it, it's, it's like, you know. It's it, it kind of reminds me of Fat Albert in a way because it all takes place <laughs> in the junkyard, but they have yeah. their the, all these props and everything to make these sweeted movies, and it's just about the beauty of creation and just using your imagination. I just yeah. thought it was really great, man. I mean, gosh, <laughs> man, I, I, and, I, and we were able to talk about that movie, and that's why I feel like this podcast that I'm doing is such a blessing for me to be able to talk to people who I've watched on television or seen in the movies and tell them, thank you. Like I'm telling you, thank you for being a part of that movie, man. Thank you for, yeah. thank you. Just thank you, man. You don't, I know, you know, you, you're doing, you were just doing it because you, you love to act, but you know, you, you touched a lot of people and you made a lot of people happy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Especially like, you know, when, when a 40 something year old man is just tired and he needs something to get him through the day, man. So thank you for being a part of a, <laughs> one of my favorite movies, man. And and you were in another great movie, a baseball movie called Little Big League. And it's just, it makes it like all these things, man. I mean, to me, it's something special about, and I and I had the I had the honor, I'm not, I'm not name dropping, but I'm just saying this is this, these are the blessings that I've had, where I had an opportunity yeah. to talk to um Don Weiss, who played Goldberg from the Mighty Ducks. And I was telling him, oh, like, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I, I was telling him, like, man, there's something special about actors from the 80s and the 90s. They just felt like real people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I felt like, like, <laughs> yeah. like when I watch Goonies, right? I feel like I'm almost a fly on the wall. Like these, these are these feel like yeah. real kids. That's why I can't really watch Stranger Things because it doesn't like okay, a bunch of millennials playing people from kids from the 80s. I can't believe that. But when I watch something like Goonies, <laughs> it's like they feel real. Like I, I, I totally ride my bike around the around the neighborhood to try to do some adventurous thing. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. They felt like real oh, people. Yeah. And I gotta commend you, like a, from actors of my generation, and it's so refreshing to see somebody like you know Jonathan Key Kwan who played Data win an Oscar after being dormant for 22 years and he was in one of the best movies I watched last year which is everything everywhere all at once and just to see something like that That's I feel amazing. like the the the, 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 the yeah. actors from my generation like you I think I think it's I think yeah. it's it's your time now because it's just like it kind of it happened that way for John Travolta, you know what I'm saying? With, with Pulp Fiction, where like he had a right. resurgence in his yeah. career, and I feel like this is going to happen for the actors of my generation. You know what I'm saying? I think it's yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so great to see that you know, you know those those guys who were kind of of my you know era to have their you know their moment of glory. You know, all these many years later, it's really like. It's very cathartic, you know, to see that. <laughs> Absolutely, really man. Good. We, you know, we we also, I got to say, we really appreciate that you appreciate these movies that, you, you know, like you watch these movies and you talk about them. And obviously, you know, the love that you have for them shines through. And that is really important for us as artists, you know, because that's that's the biggest, that you know, the big picture reason. That's why we do it. You know, we want to create something that people will will love and is meaningful to them, you know. So the fact that you do, it means the world to us, you know. It's really absolutely it's thank you. Yeah. I mean, I had I, yeah. I had like a um I had a discussion with like, you know, one of my friends. What we talking about was like I was saying how like things don't need to be remade, you know what I mean? Like and 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 because Something like a lot of these, a lot of the Disney remakes, they don't need to be remade. Why don't you just re-release them and put them back in a the theater? Well, yeah. my friend had a, my friend said, well, in order to do that, it's going to take a huge marketing campaign and all this other stuff. I'm like, now at the time I agreed with them, but I'm like thinking like now I'm like, well, I'm not too sure about that. If you put them out, if you put out a certain movie on its anniversary date and you make it special, like, I don't know, give away a few movie posters or what have you, have a little bit of trivia, but, yeah. you know, do something like that, you know, that way it doesn't tarnish the legacy, you know what I'm saying? It has enough of a fan base, you know, yeah. to like, you know, have people watch it, you know what I'm saying? And I feel yeah. like, I think, I think that's really, really important. It's very rare that the remakes, you know, are as, as good, you know, that they are of the same quality, it's very rare dude so it's i'm gonna tell you right rare. now <laughs> if they decide to remake back to the future i'm gonna I, i'm gonna go off because there's just <laughs> certain things that just don't need to be remade uh when when um we we uh my friend chris gervais and i and a few other friends they had a 25th anniversary at the amc of back to the future and it was yeah. great they gave away 27 by 40 posters. They had a little uh, trivia at the beginning. And it was good uh, for me because that was my first time watching the first one in the movie theater. Because I right. didn't get a chance to watch it until it came to VHS. Right. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like that that made it all, all the more special. You know what I'm saying? It, yeah. You know, yeah. Um, dude, How fun I, is it I'm, to see it in the theater? You know, like, I love oh gosh. that. We have a we have a theater in LA. I'm not there now, but we have a theater in LA called the New Beverly, and they they play you know lots of older movies. Tarantino owns it, and they play yes. all kinds of old movies, and it's great. It's just so fun to see these you know movies on the big screen that you know obviously I I was too young to see, you know right. <laughs> That's so crazy that you we 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 just mentioned that on my last round table because. Um, there, uh, do you remember the show called Nick Arcade? Yeah, right. I do. Right. Well, well, Phil Moore, who's the game show host, he was on my round table and, and we, we, he was um, talking about, yeah, um, cause my friend Chris was like, yeah, I'm about to go to Los Angeles. He's like, you need to check out this, 
this theater, um, Quentin Tarantino's theater. I mean, we did, we were just talking about that. That's so crazy. Uh, yeah. Oh, so cool. We actually, yeah. uh, before Tarantino owned it, uh, we did a, we did a wizard screening there. This is, you know, probably nice. years ago or 15 years ago now, but we did a screening there and Todd came. So, uh, you wow. Know, Todd and I did a, a you know, kind of Q&A before the movie or after the movie. And uh, yeah, I love that place. It's a great. Was it a just, good turnout? Yeah, it was. Uh, the, it was sold out. The theater was packed. We were so shocked to see so many exactly. people. No, <laughs> it, the reason if you build it, they will come. If you get yeah. that, it takes, but you don't put it out like. You don't re-release it every year. You just re- right. re-release it on the anniversary date. That makes it special. And then, you know, the word gets out that you're going to be there. People will come, man. I mean, like, yeah. dude, it's been yeah. proven time and time again. Oh, my gosh. But um, <laughs> how can people reach you? I could talk all day, man. How can people reach you? <laughs> uh, well, I you you can find me on all the, the stuff. I'm not, you know, I'm not a very active, uh, you know, social media guy. <laughs> I don't, I don't really do the promotion kind of stuff. I, I kind of okay. gave up on that, but, uh, but I'm there. I'm on, you know, I'm on the Instagram and the Twitter and all that good stuff. So, you know, if I, and I, you know, I always like hearing from people. So, you know, if people do want to reach out to me, I'm there, you know, I'm available. Absolutely, man. But look, man, I, I just want to say, I don't even know how long I've been on here, but thank you for your time. Thank you for, yeah, you know, again, make being part of a great movie, and you know, keep on doing what you do. Just you know, stay stay vigilant and just uh, keep being you, man. I really, really appreciate your time. I'm so happy we were finally able to talk today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for having me on, man. It's a pleasure to to uh, hang out with you. I really appreciate <laughs> okay. it. Okay, yeah, you too. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. <laughs>